want to delve to peruse the agenda, and uh, I need a motion to approve it. I move we approve the agenda for August 26th. 2021. Second. Second. Thank you, Ed. Uh, any further discussion on the agenda? Um, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I need to state a conflict. Oh. Uh, so do I do that uh, now, or is that it be entered into the rest with the Carr family? Okay. The item. Yes. Thank you. Um, and you're supposed to. I'll recuse myself of. Uh, well, I have a question. I'll rec certainly recuse myself from the vote for the items of Carr and I guess McNabb also, since it's kind of all tied together. Um, I can either sit here and be quiet or I can leave the room. I don't know what the room <laughs> Okay, all right. But I think it should be entered into the record. Yes. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah. Look at me. Oh, I thought you were the secretary. Not anymore. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's a form that um, will get you to. Yes. Okay. As well. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll send it to you. I think. Uh, there are agenda packets on the corner of the desk right there. Because I'm related to the. Okay. We have uh, a motion uh, and a second to approve uh, further discussion that was uh, presented by Susan, where she needs to abstain uh, due to a conflict. Uh, which is so noted. Uh, uh, all those uh, in favor of the uh, agenda as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Hearing none, uh, the agenda is approved as presented. Moving on to the meeting minutes of June 24th. Um, the trustee had a chance to uh, take a look at those also. Uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I move to approve the minutes as presented. I second it. Second? Yeah, I second it, Bruce. All my Thank you, Paul. Any further discussion on the meeting minutes? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of approving the meeting minutes of June 24th, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Hearing none, uh, the meeting minutes from June 24th have been approved. Thank you very much. Yes. I did not get to um, make a motion for the agenda. Jason? Jason. I think it's second. And Ed? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and I am pleased to announce that we have two new LCD members, and uh, of course this is uh, good uh, as it uh, uh, keeps uh, uh, our uh, board uh, diverse, which is great, and uh, I like that. Um, we all know that teams do better when they're diverse, so uh, I'd like them both to introduce themselves. Uh, first, I will start here. Uh, 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 live. Uh, uh, please introduce yourself. And just, okay. just tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, my name is Kristen Young, and uh, my biggest interest was in um, land conservation of plants. Um, I studied plants in school, um, and I go out and all the preserves, and, and, and the, especially the spring and fall. Um, my, right now, I'm doing work um, for foundation, doing nonprofit work. Before that, I was doing political work related to the county. So um, I am serve on the planning commission, so I'm very familiar with um, COP plan and, and policy, and I think that's oh, yeah. mostly what I can contribute to oh, the board. Excellent. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Kristen. And then, of course, uh, live, uh, online, uh, we have... Uh, uh, She's here. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Kate. Please introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, my name is Kate Lee. I'm a retired uh, U.S. librarian. I was at Marston Science Library for years and years and retired in 2004. Um, just been 
working outside, volunteering, running Sierra Club outings, Audubon, this and that, uh, ACT. Uh, it's just been sort of a lifelong thing. And um, last year, I was honored to have been awarded ACT's Conservation Steward Award. So that's about the most exciting, <laughs> nicest thing. So this is uh, where I've been just all of my grown up life, I think. Thank, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kristen. Um, we look forward to uh, uh, having your input, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be uh, well received, and uh, you'll have some uh, uh, very good uh, opportunity to do that uh, through these uh, through these meetings. Uh, moving on to property evaluations, uh, Andy, uh, I believe we have Lock Musa Slew Flatwoods. Uh, we do, and Emily is going to be presenting that. Um, are you able to get the screen? Oh, you're muted. Edder? Sorry. Can you all hear me? Still can't hear you. Yes. Yes? Yes. Still can't hear you. Ross can hear you. I don't think we can hear any of them. They can hear me. You guys can't. Okay. I will now oh. commence with the redialing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. Let's, we gotta get an owl. County's gotta get an owl. Right. Oh, let's try. Oh, is it just that? Can somebody speak online? Hello. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, can Barely. Yeah. yeah she's, I can hear. Maybe Hello. Just crank it up. Crank up the it's, volume. It's on Mac. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. How about now? No. No. I don't know what else to do. Is there a speaker. Or we have to do it on the cell phone. I can hear. Yay. Hello? All right. Hey. Hey. Okay. All right. Give me just a second so I can share my screen with you all. All right. Can you all see the title slide? Papusa Sloop Flatwoods? Yes. Okay. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Emily. Uh, welcome to our new members. Uh, for you guys who don't know me, um, I am one of the environmental specialists on the land conservation team uh, with Alachua County and I'll be presenting the Jackson oh, no. Ayers property to oh. you today. Oh. You. No? Hey, Emily. Um... That is so bizarre. Cell yeah. phone time. Hello? Let me... Hold on, Emily. Yep. I can try to maybe call in. If you all can hear me, I can hear her perfectly, and I'm in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I can yeah, project I, I, I to I North guess. Carolina. Maybe not Florida, though. Sorry, guys. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Tell me when you want me to say something to test it. This is what it looks like. It looks like a big echo uh, thing, but it has cameras. So it's do the sound and the camera. I'll be okay with it in here, but not in my house. Okay, not for your house. But. <laughs> <laughs> That is just totally my plan is to get one in your house. In the meeting, this meeting is being recorded. Recorded. You have been added. Hello? Hello? 
Ooh, they're not cheap. Okay. Emily, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Now we yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so hello again. Welcome to our new members. My name is Emily. I am one of the environmental specialists with the Alachua County Forever Land Conservation Team, and I'll be presenting the Jackson Ayers property to you today. Uh, so the Jackson Excuse Ayers. Oh, Emily, just, uh, Andy, are you taking the? I am. That's okay. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Go ahead. I'm okay. Okay. Are we, are we, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so the Jackson Ayers property is in the Lockaloosa Slough Flatwoods ACF project area, and that project area has a REPA score of 7.73 of 9.44, so that's for the Lockaloosa Slough Flatwoods project area. The score for the property is a 6.2 of 10 based on our on-site evaluation, uh, so we gave the property itself a score of 6.2. It's 116 acres in size. It is two parcels under one ownership. There are two buildings on site, a house and a barn. Uh, according to the, just based on what's on the property appraiser website, uh, the just value of the property is $126,600, which comes out to around $1,091 an acre. And the total value, again, according to the property appraiser website is $127,600, which comes out to $1,000. $100 an acre. We do not currently have an asking price for the property. It has been nominated by the landowners for consideration as a fee simple acquisition. So just to orient you as to where we are in the county, we are on the very southeast um, portion of the county. Uh, the Jackson Ayers parcels are in red. The or dark orange line is the county boundary. So you can see we're only a couple miles from both the Putnam and the Marion County boundary. The property is just east of US Highway 301, east of Orange Lake. It is north of the Lockloosa Slough ACF preserve that we own and manage. <clears throat> and if I can direct your attention to the peach colored property here, this is on our acquisition, active acquisition list. And this is actually the, the Fox Pen Connector property. So this is not a property that we currently own, but we are under contract to acquire it. Um, it is a over 4,000 acre parcel that would connect the Lockaloosa Slough Preserve to the Fox Pen Preserve. So it'd be a really significant wildlife corridor. And the Jackson Ayers parcels are potentially going to be significant in moving this, uh, this larger acquisition forward to completion, which I'll go over in the next slide. So here's a bit of a more zoomed in aerial of the Jackson Ayers parcels. In the orange color, again, is the Fox Pen Connector property, again, which we are under contract to acquire. And one of the things that we're having to navigate as a property of that, that acquisition is that there is a 40 acre out parcel as a part of that acquisition that, we, there, that is not connected to the main part of the Fox Pen Connector uh, property that there is currently no legal access to. So we are moving forward with the Fox Pen Connector uh, contract to acquire it under the condition that we find legal access, find a way to get legal access to this property, which is where the Jackson parcels can come in significantly. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the Jackson Ayers parcels do provide um, the critical land link that would connect that 40 acre isolated out parcel to the rest of the 4,000 acre box pin connector um, ACF or property that we're working on acquiring. Um, so that would solve the problem that we currently have of not having legal access to this out parcel, uh, which, we, which we need to finalize kind of moving forward with the acquisition of the, the box pin connector, which is a really significant um, project that we're working on. <clears throat> So here's a bit more of a zoomed out aerial of, of the property with the surrounding, <clears throat> some of the surrounding landowners. Um, you can see a bit more of the Fox Pen Connector property. I don't know. So a bit more of the Fox Pen Connector property, which is still in the this gold my color. Is... There are some, muted. there are some pretty the significant- The video is stopped. Oh. Was unmuted, but the video is stopped. Oh. Can, can everybody still hear? Or, okay. 
Um, so there's some pretty significantly sized uh, lands that are relatively undeveloped surrounding Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, so there's some pretty significantly sized lands surrounding the property that look like they're still relatively undeveloped. Um, but as far as I know, we haven't spoken with any of the other surrounding landowners except for the landowner immediately to the south, uh, who is at this time not interested in his land becoming a part of our program. But the zoomed out aerial really kind of highlights that connection again that the Jackson Ayers parcels would provide between the main body of the Fox Pin connector piece to the little 40 acre out parcel that we're trying to get uh, legal access to. Here's a soils map of the property. Overall on site, uh, soils are not very well drained. As you go from west to east, you go from very poorly drained to uh, in the reddish color, poorly drained and purple mod or somewhat poorly drained. Uh, so not, not a lot of uh, good drainage on the site, um, except for this little blue area, which is some moderately well-drained soils, but we weren't able to explore that on our, our site visit to the property. So during our site visit, we were accompanied by two of the family members who own the land, uh, Sarah and Mary, who were able to give us some good uh, information about their family's historical um, ownership of the property, as well as some, um, some really neat information about the surrounding land as well. As I mentioned in the title slide, there are two buildings on site, um, a very old barn and this old uh, house. Um, neither are in very good shape at the moment. There's nobody currently living in the house and there has not been anyone living in the house since about the mid 90s, I believe. Um, the ACE, the property appraiser website has this home dating back to at least 1930, um, but the family members that we spoke to on site indicated that their family has lived there since at least the late 1890s, so the, the original structure is, is potentially as old as that. And while we were talking to Sarah and Mary, Sarah actually had um, a whole album of historic photos of the property on her phone, and so she shared a few of them with me, so I'll share a couple of them with you just to give you a, some, a little tangent into the historical context. Uh, so Sarah Vera Jackson is, is the, the, their heirs are the, own, the, are the owners of the property. So this is Sarah Vera Jackson, um, who was one of the original owners of the property. Her daughter, these are her two daughters and the baby Mary is one of the, one, one of the women that we were able to speak with on site. And she was actually born in that house um, and Sarah, was the other uh, woman that we spoke to on site and I believe is one of her eldest grandchildren on her son's side. Uh, so the, here's a couple more pictures of the, of the grandkids in front of the house. So this is the porch of the house. Um, and this is Sarah uh, in that picture with one of her younger siblings, Lynn. And then the majority of the grandchildren on the front porch steps of the house as well with Sarah in the background. So just, she had a lot of neat uh, historical uh, photos to share, and it was just kind of neat to go through them with her. So as part of the family's um, historical use of the property, they did raise cattle on the property. So about 32 acres of the property have been converted to improved pasture. There were no cows on site when we visited, um, but there is still a cattle lease on the property that I believe is currently up at the end of this year. Um, as far as pasture goes, not a whole lot to say about it. It's pretty standard pasture, it's improved pasture, not a lot of remnant native vegetation in it, except a couple of the, um, the more tolerant species that were able to hang on, a few scattered beauty berries, uh, palmettos, nettles, and uh, things of that nature. But overall, pretty standard for pasture. The two areas that you might be interested, though, as it connects to the pasture are the boundaries where it connects to the Lockaloosa Slough property. Uh, so the, the topmost picture is uh, the northeast side of the Jackson Ayers parcel where it connects to the main parcel of the, the Lockaloosa Slough Fox Pen Connector. So all the pines there are um, on the, the property that we're working on acquiring is Fox Pen Connector acquisition. And the bottom picture is um, the boundary with the 40 acre out parcel, which we were trying to get legal access to. As far as uplands go, historically on the site, um, there were most of the uplands were and are currently music flatwoods. 
There was some evidence of a successional hardwood forest on the smaller western parcel, but the majority of them were probably historically music flatwoods. Uh, they were in a few different sections on the property and they're currently fenced off uh, to keep cattle out of them. It doesn't look like based on the areas that they were ever fully cleared, but they were historically harvested for pine. Uh, so in many areas, there wasn't much of a pine overstory and, and the pines that were there were fairly widely scattered. Uh, Mid-story and ground cover diversity varied across the different sections of music flatwoods. Um, kind of in the northern section with a lot more hardwood encroached, pretty well dominated by saw palmetto in the understory with scattered beautyberry. Uh, but in other areas where we lacked some more of that oak encroachment, we had some really thick uh, gallberry coverage. Uh, you can see Andy standing there for how tall that gallberry was uh, with, with scattered saw palmettos. And we were actually just able to see other, other uh, remnants of the historic ground cover that might have been there at one time. So there was evidence of carpeferous. Uh, we saw some, some wire grass, a little bit of latrus, shiny blueberry, and, and definitely um, indicators of a lot of the other like remnant um, mid and understory vegetation that you might typically see in music flatwoods environments. Um, <clears throat> all the areas could have definitely benefited um, from fire but there definitely was evidence of, of that remnant, remnant um, ground cover vegetation at least potentially in the seed bank. As far as wetlands go, there was, there was a good variety of, of wetlands across the property. Uh, we both had depression, so both in depression, or the depression marshes and basin swamp. So the smaller wetlands uh, were more on the west side. So there were a couple of small depression marshes in the, the pasture, as well as in some in the, one of the music flatwoods sections. Those were in fairly good condition. Uh, the music flatwoods one was a little bit more protected, had a lot of maiden cane and fetter bush surrounding it. And so, so overall, had a, they had a pretty good complement of the native species you might find in a depression marsh. Uh, the other small wetlands on the east side um, was a, a small basin swamp that was a more north um, in the area. Um, again, for its size, had a good complement of, of native vegetation. Uh, the hardwood dominate, dominated area had a lot of swamp tupelo in it, but you also had pickerel weed, maiden cane, uh, and other uh, shrubby vegetation that you would typically see in a basin swamp. The larger wetlands, though, were in on the western, on the western side um, in a kind of a chain of a, like a basin marsh system with a lot of um, bayball kind of around the edges. Uh, so, and these, although we weren't able to really explore them very heavily just because of the density of the vegetation and how wet they were, uh, from what we could see, they seemed to be in good to even excellent condition. Uh, so they varied um, kind of in, in, in vegetation type from some pretty dense kind of hard, wet hardwood areas to more open pockets that were dominated by ferns and grasses. Uh, to some of the deeper depressions um, that were hardwood dominated again by mostly by swamp tupelo. Uh, we didn't get far enough to see any if there are any potential cypress on site, but again, a lot of uh, the swamp tupelo was kind of the dominating species that we saw uh, in the deeper depressions. So again, overall, a lot of good uh, plant diversity uh, within the wetland system throughout the property, but especially um, in the larger kind of basin swamps on the western side, it's, it's kind of hard to capture that um, in just a few photographs with this little time as we were able to spend on the property. Um, but again, overall, it seemed to be very, and, and like a, a lot of really good diversity um, on the property uh, with, the, um, with the wetlands. As we were walking around in some of the wet hardwood areas, we did come across a couple of blue-eyed vireo nests. Uh, we actually saw two of them. Uh, which was kind of which was really interesting to find. Um, also heard and observed a lot of other bird species on site. Uh, according to the FWC database, there are at least three bald eagle nests within a mile of the property. And uh, in speaking with the two landowners that we were able to meet with, there was historically a bald eagle nest on site as well. As for other wildlife that we saw on the property, um, we saw several gopher tortoise burrows around the home site as well as scattered throughout the pasture, um, some fence lizards and other reptiles around the homestead. Um, and we were also fortunate enough to see a pygmy rattlesnake uh, while we were on the site, um, which was kind of a nice treat 
for as little time again as we were able to spend on the property. Uh, it was nice to see, nice to see one there. As far as invasive exotic plant species go, there was not a significant amount of invasive exotic plants. Um, there were three different ones aside from pasture grasses that we observed on the site. Uh, tropical soda apple uh, was scattered throughout the pasture area. Um, it's one that's typically found in, in pasture, so it wasn't unexpected to see it there. <clears throat> and then the other two were China berry and Chinese tallow trees. And there were only about two or three of them that we saw while we were on site around kind of some of the wetland edges. So really not, not a lot of invasive exotic um, footprints on the property that we were able to determine. Uh, so that's really about all I have for the Jackson Ayers property. Again, overall, um, uh, some, uh, some decent flatwood components, but some very good diversity in the wetlands. But the real significance of this property, again, is the connection it provides to the 40 acre out parcel that is a part of the fox pin connector piece. Um, before I end with the last photo that we have on site is one of the uh, one of the other neat things that we were able to observe when we were on site. <clears throat> For those of you who aren't familiar with it. So this is a prickly pear cactus. And the white on it, although it might look like a mold or a mildew, is actually a substance secreted by an insect called a cochineal scale. And cochineal scales were actually hugely uh, important for the production of red dye up until about the 1850s when synthetic dyes uh, began to be more widely produced. Um, so it's not very heavily used today, except in certain countries such as Mexico and India and Peru, who still cultivate the insects uh, for the dye today. So if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to try and answer them for you. And I can't hear anybody. So if you're asking questions, I apologize because I can't hear any of them. Sorry, I'm sorry, I still can't hear if anybody's speaking. Okay, Emily, can you hear us? I can hear you, Andy. Very, very good. Thank you, Emily. Very well done. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Kristen and Kate, uh, just to kind of give you a little quick uh, updates here, or should I say, uh, uh, the way I, I like to handle this is that uh, I go around the room and, and of course, uh, folks online uh, and uh, go in order and, and ask if, you know, if you have a one question to, uh, to ask Emily, and uh, if you don't, then that's fine. Uh, after we go around and uh, get everybody's uh, question uh, taken care of, then uh, I open up the floor to open questions to whoever wants to uh, ask additional questions of, of the presenter, Emily. So uh, with that, I will uh, start with uh, Bruce, who is online, I believe, correct? Yes. Um, that's a very good presentation, and I don't have any questions. I will be uh, voting when we come to that to move it along to the active acquisition list. Thank you, Bruce. Was anybody else online? I don't think any other. I don't think so. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Jason. Um, <laughs> as far as the structures go, what would, what would the county typically do with uh, I'm not sure if they would be considered historic. I don't know if they've been modified substantially. They look pretty old. I mean, they look like they were in fairly good condition. I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear much of that if it was directed at me. 
Um, Emily, I will handle that. Uh, it was about the historic structures or the structures. So um, it depends on the site. Um, currently, I can give an example um, on Black Lake Preserve, the Johnson property. Um, we are working with the University of Florida and some other local architectural firms uh, to develop a preservation plan for some of the historic buildings on that site. If it was appropriate in the context of the property to try and interpret it through some preservation or restoration activities, then we would probably take that action. One limiting factor in this particular case is that um, there's not road access, public road access to this property. So it, it wouldn't be easy to provide interpretive opportunities to the public with that building. So we would probably just protect the building and um, not restore them. When you say protect, what does that mean? Um, separate them from fire management activities. I don't know what, it's hard to say what investment we would put into restoring the building. Does protect also mean uh, divert people from structures? Yes. Yeah. 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 It would be hard to even like visitors. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what the, the general topics behind management from this property was anyway. I, I would assume that you'd allow access if we had fees. It, it's difficult to get to it because there's not a public road that goes to it. So right. the key is that it provides access to the 40 acre out parcel. Right. The, the idea would be once it's all, I'll, 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 I'll talk with Kristen. Um, yes. Could you repeat what the status of the, um, the Fox 10 connector is? The Fox 10 connector. I'll, so, hold on. Okay. Thank you. But Charlie, take care of that. Yeah. As uh, Emily said, the property is under contract. And um, we've been cleared by the Board of County Commissioners to move towards uh, closing, given a couple of conditions. Um, the access to that 40 acres is not actually a condition. The board has approved us to go ahead and close whether or not we're able to get that connection. But certainly the connection would enhance that, that 40 acres. So as it stands right now, uh, we are headed towards an October 27th closing on the project. Okay, and that's just a fee, just to remind me. Simple. Yes. Uh, I have no questions. Okay. I think I'll pass too. Well, I have no questions, but I certainly support this piece of land. It's very logical. But I have no questions, and I won't go too much into it, but I'm sure the county attorney's office advised the commission appropriately on. The acquisition of the 40 acres without legal access and of course a prescriptive easement can be obtained yeah. if they chose to do that or if this property um gets acquired then they wouldn't have the need to do that um if anybody wants to talk about that if they're just curious about that after maybe after the meeting i'd be happy to tell you about it i don't have any questions thank you Brian. susan oh um so it's uh, it states that there's a cattle lease, and uh, but there's no active grazing at this time. There is act there just weren't cows on site while we were on the property. Um, so okay. there, is, there is still an active lease on the property currently. I believe it goes through the end of the year. I don't know okay. what the status of it will be after that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Emily, is there uh, an active hunting lease on the property? And uh, if there is not, would that property be incorporated into the um, uh, the connector? I don't know if there's an active hunting lease on this particular property. I don't believe that there is based on conversations with the landowners. Uh, one of them or two of them might be on the call and they might be able to better answer that particular aspect of the question. Um, but if it was acquired, it would probably be managed in conjunction with the connector parcel. It would probably be absorbed into that management plan. Thank you. Um, I think, and Rez, I can 
to be um yeah Sarah, not um, um Sarah if you're online and would like to comment um please please do so yes I'm here and I'm the one that contacted the conservation trust about our property although we've talked about this for years my grandmother, Sarah Vera Jackson, died in 1996, and the land really has sort of been in limbo since then. So this will um, be a point of closure for my family, and we just feel like this is a good time. God's time's the best time. I had no idea that we provided a connection to this 40 acre piece until I think Byron was one that told me about that. And we just like to see it stay in its natural form and uh, be used for something good. Thank you. We, we appreciate your uh, comments. Was, was that all who was? Uh, so there are a couple other family members, but I'd like to see if I open the floor to the uh, to the board. If there's any other further questions, uh, any, any Jason, um, could you zoom out, Emily? Could you zoom out to uh, the over zoom out? This one, or the, yeah. this one? This one. The one, the three. Yeah. So when we're talking about adding uh, like a legal access, is it just for that? piece in the upper northwest corner or is it for the pieces below as well? It's just for this one. Um, as far as I'm aware, I, I believe I could be wrong about this. Charlie, you can connect me, correct me if I am, that there's that there's road access or otherwise legal access to the other pieces. This, the 40 acres um, in the northwest of the Jackson Ayers parcels is the piece that we don't currently have legal access to. Okay, so we're buying 100, 116 acres to get access to 40 acres. No, we're not. We're buying it. But it's, according to Charlie, it sounds like the board has okayed us to move forward, even if we don't have legal access to that part. So I was, I was, um, I was misinformed about that. Um, and I, I guess I would like to know, uh, you did not, no one talked to talk to the, any of the landowners of the adjacent parcels, especially the parcel to the Northwest. Uh, unless Byron or somebody else can comment on it. Not that I know of. Uh, I've only know of a brief conversation with the landowner to the South. So I guess it's a no. Um, yeah, not, not as far as I know. So again, this piece would, it, the significance of it would just be gaining access to the 40 acres of the Loch Lusa Slough Fox Pin Connector. Jason, this is Byron. We, um, research has been conducted on the other surrounding parcels, but while we were doing that research, uh, the, the family, um, contacted us and um, and uh, and we moved forward in discussions with them, which is how we got here today. My only thought is that it's sort of an awkward uh, little island that we're creating. We're creating a bigger island 
but I, I'm just I was just curious. It makes me much more comfortable if I thought this was part of a, a strategic goal of getting that whole corner. Um, that's my that's my statement. Thank you, Jason. Does anybody else have a uh, uh, any other comments or anything else that you'd like to uh, bring up? Uh, um, so this score is lower in the public access um, areas. So I'm wondering what is, again, going back to connectors, since that's important for this part, what's the stance of the Lapisa um, sleep box and connector as far as public access? So I'll start, and Andy can kind of fill in, but um, um, Fox Pen Connector is 4,000 acres. It has a lot of public road frontage, so there are you know, numerous um, points of potential entry there. Uh, we have also had conversations with the uh, Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission about setting up a um, wildlife management area to discover not only um, the connector, but also the Lockwood Sloop property. So that would be potentially a 6,000 acre um, public hunting area. Um, we would see um, a trail network that certainly would be available for hiking, biking, um, um, horseback riding, equestrian. So lots of trail opportunities out here. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, Emily you may have mentioned this, and I'm sorry if I missed it, but you know, we talked a lot about the geographic connection here, but the, um, because there's some swamps and stuff, what about the hydrologic connection with Loch Lusa Slough? Um, so it's, it's not, it's, it's kind of based on aerials. Like I can't really show it here, but this, mm -hmm. I believe this wetland system, um, does eventually connect down to the slough. Um, it's not all natural all the way down. Sometimes it's just channelized through pasture, but I, I believe based on the aerials that there was still a con some sort of connection to the slough itself. But this is not the part of a direct part of the slough. So it contributes um, from what I remember of just looking at the aerials. But it's not a natural, it's not all vegetated the whole way down. Sometimes it's just kind of um, canals are channelized. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, Emily, I have a question. Where is the legal access for this particular property? Um, currently, there is um, a private road um, through the southern landowner's property, but it's uh, not a legal, like, as far as I know, it's not like a documented legal access. It sounds like the family historically owned all of this property. Um, they are still allowed to access it through the southern owner's property, but I don't believe it's a documented legal access. But I, I don't know for sure the entire condition of that. But it's, this is not a public road. Do you know if we would, uh, the county would be able to access the property that was acquired through that uh, particular location? We have uh, not done title on this property yet, and we don't oh, typically do that until it, it gets on the active acquisition list. Uh, as Emily said, we don't know today of any um, existing easement that provides legal access. Okay. So to some degree, it would be in the same situation as, as the 40 acres, but um, there is physical access to a public road through sure. the property. Thank you. Um, any, other, any other questions? Uh, and related to that, um, what is the purple um, outlined road? I think it's southeast 225th Street. Is that right? Private yeah, private. Okay. It, I, I believe it's a private road. We didn't get to go down it on site because this was also labeled as 225th Street on Google, um, but it's not an actual road. So we we weren't able to explore that whole connection up there. There definitely is some sort of access to residences back there but I don't believe it's a public access. Thank you, Emily. Uh, I think what we're looking for here is a motion uh, that is going to uh, put this 
property into the eligibility pool, and I open the floor to that. Ryan? I'll go ahead and make the motion. Uh, I move to add the Lock Lucis Blue Flatwood Jackson Ayers property to the eligibility pool. Thank you. I second. second. I second. Bruce. Bruce second. Thank you, Bruce. Yep. We have a motion and a second uh, to uh, put the property uh, into the eligibility pool. Uh, I will call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like. Thank you. Hearing none, the uh, uh, the motion passes. I'd like to move that we move the lot loose of Flatwoods Jackson Air property to the. Priority pool. We have a motion on the floor to move the property to the priority pool. Second. Second by Ed. Thank you, Ed. With that, uh, any further discussion, Jason? Um, as far as putting the priority pool, the rationale is that uh, it's, it's because of the connection or because of the, the environmental value or because of both? Yes. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, any any further discussion on the motion? We'll call the vote. All those in favor of putting the Lock Lusa Salute Flatwoods Jackson Ayers property uh, on the priority pool say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Hearing none, the uh, motion passes. Uh, the property is now on the priority pool. Thank you very much. Moving on, Lake Santa Fe. Brooks. All right, Ross is going to be presenting that. That doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah. <laughs> and then we organize a field trip. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Well, uh, good evening, everyone. I'd just like to also extend a, a special welcome to our new board members. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Ross Wagmans, and I'm an environmental specialist with the Office of Land Conservation. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the Lake Santa Fe Brooks nomination. This is my first time presenting a nomination to the board, and I'm very grateful to have this opportunity. So the, the Brooks property is an inholding within the Lake Alto Preserve Paget Tract which was acquired by the county last year. It falls within the Lake Santa Fe project area and consists of eight contiguous parcels with a total area of about 2.6 acres. This nomination scored a 5.93 out of 10 using our standard evaluation matrix. There are no buildings or other improvements to the land so both the just value and the total value are $4,000 or $1,550 per acre. Ms. Brooks does not have a specific asking price in mind, though she is eager to work with the county once we have authorization to move forward with this nomination. And she is the one that nominated this property. There are also no archeological sites on the property. So here you can see the Brooks property shown in red. It's, as you can see, it's about one mile east of the city of Waldo. And again, it is within the Lake Alto Preserve Paget Tract, Paget Tract that was acquired last year. This blue line running east to west, just south of the property is the Waldo Canal, which is part of a canal network that was installed in the 1880s to connect Waldo to the city of Melrose via Lake Alto and Lake Santa Fe, which is off of the map here. 
these canals were used up into the early 1990s, I'm sorry, 1900s to transport lumber, citrus, cotton, and other products from the surrounding area to the railroad depot in Waldo. It's a little difficult to see, but there's actually another canal here running just east of the Brooks property. And this was installed in the 1970s, and I'll be speaking about this more in the coming slides. The last thing I'd like to point out on this map is that the Brooks property is deeply embedded within a significant cluster of conservation lands. Lake Alto Preserve, Paget Tract, and Lake Alto North combined are about 800 acres. And then immediately to the north, you have the Santa Fe Swamp Conservation Area, which is over 7,000 acres. This property here to the south, shown with the yellow cross hatching, is the DIN property, which is on the active acquisition list, although it has not yet been acquired. So this map shows a close up of all the individual parcels that make up the Brooks property. These parcels are actually part of a planned subdivision called Pine Island that was carved out sometime in the 1970s. The subdivision consists of 36 lots, which are divided down the middle by this man-made canal. So you have 18 lots along the western bank of the canal and 18 lots along the eastern bank of the canal. The 10 lots on the west side of the canal, just north of the Brooks property, so you can kind of see the bottom of these right here. Uh, these 10 parcels were acquired along with the Paget acquisition last year. So the important thing to note here is that the Brooks nomination would complete ownership of the entire western side of this canal. So this map showing neighboring parcel ownership provides a more complete view of the Pine Island subdivision. Um, again, you have 18 parcels along the west side, 18 parcels along the east side. Um, here you can see the full 10 parcels that were acquired with the Paget acquisition last year. These 18 parcels along the eastern side of the canal were, I'm sorry, they are owned by the Johnson heirs and the county has been in contact with them regarding these properties, but at this point, there are no nominations. So again, just to reiterate this, the Brooks nomination would complete Western, Western ownership of the entire portion of the, these parcels. You may be wondering what this kind of strangely shaped polygon is here that leads up to the subdivision and then wraps around both sides. This is actually platted as a public road. In its current condition, uh, I, I should say this, this road was never developed. Uh, the section here running east to west is basically a Jeep trail that you can't really get a vehicle down in its current condition. Um, and then this section running north to south there's basically no evidence of any kind of road or even a trail at this point. Although there are two shallow ditches that were dug along either side of this platted road. This is a soils map of the surrounding area. As you can see, the red indicates very poorly drained soils and the orange here indicates just regularly poorly drained soils. <laughs> Um, so basically the entire extent of this map is either poorly drained or very poorly drained or water. Um, now that you have some context for the property, I'd like to go ahead and say a few words about the actual property itself. This is a photo we took while conducting the site evaluation, and it's pretty representative of the entire 2.6 acres. Um, the predominant natural community and really the only natural community that we identified was Music Flatwoods. The overstory consists of naturally regenerated slash pine, 
although there may be a very small component of longleaf or loblolly. The mid story is a mixture of hardwoods and shrubs, predominantly red maple, loblolly bay, magnolia, fetterbush, wax myrtle, gallberry, and saw palmetto. As you can see, the ground cover is generally pretty sparse due to the lack of fire and the resulting duff accumulation and needle cast. But some of the ground cover species that we saw were shiny blueberry, bracken fern, muscadine grape, Carolina jessamine, and winged sumac. Aside from the general lack of fire, these music flatwoods are in good condition. And in terms of invasive exotic species, this site was quite clean. Uh, we only saw, I think, three um, camphor tree seedlings and saplings. So generally quite, quite clean from invasive species. So this is a photo that was taken from the western bank of the canal on the brook side. Um, the actual property line runs essentially down the middle of this canal. And the parcels owned by the Johnson heirs are shown here across the canal. So again, just to show you, the, the footprint of the canal covers about one quarter of the parcels themselves. And the width of the canal is about 55 feet. There are a few small islands that were left in the canal itself. You can kind of make out one of these here in this photo. The overall management of these parcels would be blended into the management of the greater Paget tract. This includes any recreational opportunities, such as a potential hiking trail. So I, I believe I forgot to mention this earlier, but the final connection that would ultimately connect the Pine Island Canal to the Waldo Canal was actually never finished. So this image shows basically a trickle of water going from the Pine Island Canal to the Waldo Canal here. And this was, we went there during one of the wettest times of year. So really there's not really any practical connection between these canals at this point. Additional management costs incurred by adding these 2.6 acres to the Paget tract will be negligible due to economies of scale. In other words, the difference in annual costs between managing 320 acres versus the existing 318 acres is going to be very small. And one final point I'd like to add is that based on the development review that we had conducted for this property evaluation, there's essentially no way that this subdivision could ever be developed based on current, current zoning laws and regulations. I'd like to wrap things up with a few photos of one of the more interesting things I think I've come across in the woods. Uh, this was a red maple tree that we stumbled upon while we were conducting the site evaluation, and this is actually on the Brooks property itself. If you look closely, you can see that there are some large claw marks actually going all the way up the stem of the tree. And this, this image shows what appears to be a barefoot claw mark. Um, this is about a foot and a half off the ground, and then around chest height, there was another pretty significant uh, claw marks here in the tree. I'm definitely not a wildlife expert, but I feel pretty confident in saying that this tree was climbed by a bear. Thank you all very much for your attention, and I'd like to go ahead and open it up to any questions that you might have. Uh, thank you, Ross. That was very good for your first presentation. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go uh, around the room. You have a question. Okay, very good. Thank you. I'm going to go around the room again. Um, let's start with Dwayne. Uh, no questions. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Susan? I have two questions. <laughs> what? No? <laughs> it's a very interesting. It's about to map two. All right. I'm, I'm confused about who owns the platted road because it's kind of, does county own this? County. Or? 
Okay, that, that was very short. The second one was a, a longer one, but um, maybe what is the overall uh, approach to the canal? Like, so should the county acquire all of this? Could the canal be restored or eliminated or something like that? Yeah, at, at this point, we don't have any plans to restore the canal. Uh, perhaps Andy might be able to contribute something more to that. Yeah, um, I think our strategy would probably be some initial monitoring before we would embark on any plans for restoration. The type of earth moving that would be necessary to fill in a canal of that size is going to be fairly significant and without established access. It, the level of disturbance might not be worth the values seen through restoration of the canal. Thank you. Brian, I'm actually more interested in the opposite, uh, which would be to connect it to uh, punch that little missing connection to tie the Waldo Canal to, to this canal for future recreational interior access. Um, and then the other thing would be, of course, at some point to vacate the plat. Um, at least the uh, the road that comes these parcels, if these were acquired, and then Call from if we're Ross eight page. Call from no. Ross eight page. Call from yeah, maybe Ross eight page. About that. Call from Ross eight page. I can't hear you guys anymore if you're if you're speaking. Can anybody hear me? <laughs> I can hear you, Ross, but I'm okay. on Yeah, we can hear you. All right. But we're not at the meeting. Strange, I attend quite a few hybrid meetings, and this is the only one that seems to have this problem. Yeah, it's very bizarre. Andy she says she accidentally hung up. She's gonna get us back. Okay. Thanks. Us uh, all of us, all of us online can hear each other, but we can't hear Grace Knight. Yeah. Just stand by. Thanks, Byron. Good job on your presentation, Ross. Thanks, Emily. You too. Well, I'm not. Was it? I thought I heard Andy for a second. Emily, do you have any more jokes? You know my only good one. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's now my also my only good one. <laughs> Good 
Can you hear us? Yes. Great. Yay. All right. Uh, so just. Bruce, can you hear us? Yes. All right. Good. Good. My only comment is uh, very good job, Ross. Good, good first presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Thank oh, you. I have no question, though. No questions. No questions. Okay. Okay. Can I assume that the platted roads are paved or just hard rock? Or paper. Nothing. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So they're just wood. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Ed. Yeah, Susan pretty much got mine on the platted road. Does that apply also for the little bit of space between the northernmost parcel and what we already have? I think that is a mapping discrepancy. Okay. Um, that our parcels would connect with the, the lower. Or it could be a road stub. It could be I haven't looked at the plan, yeah. but it could be a road stub. To so it would, so it would, it would fall under the previous answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kristen? Yes. Um, the uh, social and human values B scored really high on that. Um, I was wondering if that is that because of the green belt? Since there doesn't really have any municipal interaction there. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember which question specifically refers to the social and human values on the matrix. Unfortunately, uh, do you want me to read it? Yeah, if you could. I don't. No, no. I did. I heard it click off. You guys can't hear me now? <laughs> no, it's not you. <laughs> this thing. Um, so to answer your question, I, I presume that it was scored at that point because of its existing connectivity. Oh, no. I, I can't hear them now. <laughs> yep. Just us uh, again. Uh. I'm unmuted. I hear thumping sounds in the background. Is uh, somebody trying to get out of the screen? Sorry, right, I'll mute myself. That might be my neighbor. Can you hear the can you hear the thump thump thump? It might be my neighbor's bass. I apologize. Oh. If you can hear that. I'll turn myself off. I, it's okay, it doesn't bother me. I was just trying to figure out. First I thought it was a, a signal, an SOS or something. And then I decided maybe some little man was inside the this computer screen trying to get out. I don't even know. Oh, oh we, we can hear you now. Yes. Can you, can, okay, you, you can hear and. Hello? Hello? We, we can hear you. Okay. okay. I have no questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear questions. Any, anything else opening the floor to everybody? I, I'd like to move the citizen eligibility form. Second. We have a motion to put the Lake Santa Fe Brooks property on the eligibility pool, seconded by Brian. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor of putting the Lake Santa Fe Brooks property into the eligibility pool, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Bruce.
Mr. Kupon is like side. Hearing none, uh, for further discussion? I have one thing just to say. Um, out of all the preserves I've been to, the Lake Alto Preserve North has had the clearest bear tracks of any of them that I've found. So there is bear around there with the tree as well. So that's fantastic. Thank um, you. Jason, Johnny, can you Yep. Yes. On the party. Well, we didn't vote. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Uh, Jason has uh, moved to put this uh, property onto the priority pool and it has been seconded by Susan. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we call the vote. All those in favor of placing the Lake Santa Fe Brooks property onto the priority pool say aye. 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 Those like uh, motion uh, carries. Thank you. To, to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, we have some uh, old business here to um, uh, go the, the first uh, item on the uh, old business is to address some. Uh, Opportunities um, for uh, we, we had placed the Lime Rock Mines LLC property, if you recall, uh, onto the eligibility pool. And uh, uh, I believe the um, uh, Charlie or Andy, uh, Charlie, you can uh, discuss there's some potential opportunities that have come to your uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, and we would appreciate if you could give us a, uh, a little bit. Uh, discussion regarding that. Sure. Mr. Chair, last time um, we talked about this, this property, there was a question about uh, potential opportunities, um, whether there would be a partner out here that could, you know, basically come to the table with, with um, half the purchase price, that type of thing, management, what have you. And so we've done, uh, done some work on that. Uh, just to remind you, Sorry. If you'll go back one more. Sorry. Um, just to remind you, these are the you know the salient facts regarding this um, uh, this property. Okay, now you can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the red area on the map is the location. Uh, you see, it's just um, uh, south of you see between I seventy five and the and the town of uh, High Spring. Yep. Um, Photo of the of the property uh, to remind you, you know, it's, it's um, uh, largely been mined. The lower portion has been uh, reclaimed to a good uh, degree. The um, the northern portion are primarily the open pits where the active mining is, is still happening, although it's at a very low level. Right. So, regardless of the property, regardless of the, the time. Your, the staff is always monitoring these various programs to look for partnership opportunities. If we can leverage the county's funds uh, by bringing in funds from another agency, it's all for the good. And so there are a number of acquisition programs, both at the state and federal level, that we try to, um, to pay attention to. Uh, some of them are um, particularly set up for conservation easements, some of them actually allow for fee acquisition. So I'm going to um, go through a, a couple that have gotten funding. I'm going to focus primarily on the state of Florida because that's where I think the, if there is a, an opportunity, that's where it lies right now. Um, there is funding in this current state fiscal year for Florida Forever. Um, and for the uh, Florida Wildlife Corridor. Florida, neither Florida Communities Trust nor the Rural and Family Lands Protection Program received um, any appropriation this year. Next one. So move your little oh, there. There we go. So this is what's in the in the state budget. These are the um, light items from the um, appropriation bill. Um, you see the, the first big 
under land acquisition trust fund. That's the, the big funding source that um, up to one third of the dock stamps um, that are put into this fund for up to 20 years. And this year, $100 million was um, dedicated for basically Florida forever. An additional $50 million out of that fund um, was placed there for uh, springs restoration. Uh, in addition, um, the money that the state of Florida received from the federal government for COVID relief, um, there was actually $300 million that uh, went towards the Florida Wildlife Corridor and another $25 million for spring restoration. And I think that um, Florida Forever and Spring Restoration are the two possibilities um, for partnership on this particular piece of property. Florida Forever, um, there is a, a somewhat similar piece of property. I believe we discussed it with you um, when the property was first brought up. It's in Columbia County. It's in the Itch Company Trace. Um, so it has a groundwater connection and potentially ties in with the H. Tuckney River. Uh, that is a, a mine piece of property, several hundred acres that was purchased by the, the state of Florida uh, under Florida forever. There is a possibility that um, a project could be developed and presented uh, to the state uh, for funding under Florida forever for the, uh, the Lime Rock Mine. Personally, I don't think it has a really good um, chance using that funding source. It's not connected uh, very well to other uh, other properties. It, it sits all by itself. So um, I don't think that it would it would um, score very highly with the uh, Acquisition Restoration Council. The other possibility is Springs Restoration funding, and we have been able to attract some Springs Restoration funding for projects here in Alaska County. Uh, the Mill Creek Sink um, property that we've tried to acquire and the Rember Conservation Easement um, are both up for grant um, using that, that funding. If we go to the next slide, the common um, factor for all three of those projects is that they're all within the Hornsby Spring spring shed. That dotted line that you see, again, the, um, the Lime Rock Mine property is shown Hornsby Spring spring shed. And so since um, the Lime Rock Mine has a direct connection with the aquifer, and it's that close to, to Hornsby Spring, which is at that you know western point of the uh, the spring shaft. There there may be some um, interest in um, uh, this property for springs restoration. What we would have to do, like we did with the others, is put together a, an application the next time the water management district um, opens up a funding cycle for this project. Uh, submit it, the water management district would evaluate it, and then they would see whether they would recommend that to DEP for uh, final funding. Um, that's what happened with the Rember property last December. So we put the application together in December, uh, submitted it to the water management district. They reviewed it, they approved it, and it's gone to Tallahassee. We still haven't gotten final word whether the Rember conservation easement um, was approved as a Springs project. I suspect it will since the district approved it, but we haven't gotten that final word yet. We could take the same tack with um, this property where we would propose it um, presumably this, this coming December for uh, next year's funding. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Um, in order for uh, um, y'all to do that, um, would this property then essentially have to be into the uh, priority pool? Um, I don't know that it has to be. Um, I think typically what this this board would do um, would be to put it in the priority pool with the condition that it's a bargain share project. And then, you know, we would only move forward on it if we have that that partnership uh, in place. Uh, you are proposing like some merged funding, like a 50-50 right. split or something. Okay, right. with with a state program. 
Yes. Okay. And then, yeah, so, for instance, um, our our ask with the Rimber Conservation Easement was about 50%. It was about a million dollars, you know, mm -hmm. of our, our rough guess on what the, the value of that property is. Okay. And then I was going to ask about um, FTT, if that was on the radar. Uh, yeah, but there's no funding. Oh, that's right. You said that. Uh, Paul, uh, the, the big concern we had was what to do with it after it was acquired and purchasing is not physically feasible. Right. But then who's going to figure out what to do with it? And who would be carrying the cost of restoration? Honestly, that, that's still the, uh, the question. Um, you know, Jim uh, Nara from um, Parks and Open Space here at the county. Um, gave you all a little discussion of, you know, how it could be improved and managed more or less as a, as a county park. We would have to develop some type of relationship like that, either within the county or with uh, some other outside partner, perhaps the, uh, the city of, of High Spring. Um, but that's all yet to be determined. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Um, yes, other people in the spring shed, are there producing um, support arguments for spring questions? Is there any solution going on? The, um, the mining has basically intercepted the aquifer. So the water that you see in the in the rock pits today is the same water in the whole rest of the aquifer. Okay. So, you know, the, uh, the rationale then would be uh, to control this area, control potential uh, input pollution to the aquifer. Perhaps for the benefit of our two new members, um, Oh, here we got a map. Um, maybe a minute or two to recap the presentation from before. Oh, I've heard about okay, but okay. All right, we're good. We're good. Remembering the presentation from the county recreation individual, he seemed to give us the worst case scenario of flagship sort of. You know, uh, wild water sort of needing, you know, permanent employees or a major vendor. Where I, I didn't agree with that scenario. I thought that it would be brought on with hiking. You know, we need a minimal amount of, and I, you know, the county deals with liability all the time on all the properties. So, I mean, I think I'm not sure legally what they have to put up, but you probably, you know, no swimming at the, at the entrance. And if you get drowned, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's that, that my only comment is I think that the, the boogeyman of like the massive direct like management costs as far as managing the, the people, I didn't I didn't agree with. Well, Charlie, just correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, uh, it, it, went, it, it went to a priority pool from the motion and we requested uh, uh, having a bargain share uh, in there. It's still, the, the, the county commission still is the ultimate ones who have to look at the whole scenario along with your presentation and so on and say, yes, this is viable, we believe it's viable in your opinion, uh, or, or then they obviously have some questions. It's been taking a lot from, uh, from what we, we say here, I understand. They still have the ultimate say so. Yes, if this board um, puts the property in priority pool, then staff would prepare um, an item for the Board of County Commissioners and uh, request that it be placed on the active acquisition list. And the board, you know, the Board of County subject Commissioners. To, subject to a bargain share. Yes, yes. If, if, that's, if yeah, that is the condition so, you put on, so, so. that's right. Um, and then the Board of County Commissioners would, would review, you know, we provide. To them and, and make the final decision. Uh, so, 
like twice or three times. <laughs> in our board. Right. Claire, question uh, when you talk about Florida Forever, this is not in an active Florida Forever project area, no. right? So this would be in and of itself a whole new Florida Forever project. Correct. Which is a long term endeavor. And how many acres is it? It'd be really almost too small to I don't think that's even an option. Right. I don't I don't think that it's really a very viable um, option. So I strike that one. That, that springs money maybe. Do I uh, All right. Dave. question I don't know FCT very well can FCT uh, can let's say the county bought this land would there be any opportunity to apply to FCT for management or restoration project That's part of yeah but does it have to be purchased the original purchase that's a good question yeah, I'm totally sure I, I understand well, okay, scenario. Yes, yeah, scenario. Management and, and re restoration funds, not just acquisition yeah. funds. Yeah, so um, there are some development funds that, that can come from um, FCT. Right. Um, but it's primarily an, an acquisition program. Okay. Uh, the FERDAP program is the program where counties get. Um, Recreation development funding from the, the state, and that's another one I don't think that's been funded um, mm -hmm. in the past couple of years. Okay. With FPT, though, I think when you do the grant, you put in a lot of those, those upfront costs like restoration and right. infrastructure improvements and, and sort of that kind of thing that goes into the initial purchase. Well, I understand that, but like let's say you already own the property, yeah. can you apply you get, for you get, a, you get a reimbursement of a portion of your acquisition fund? Typically, how it goes. It retroactively? Yep. Yeah, okay. you can. All right. Agree. I, I don't know exactly Our hammock, what our hammock was, was when we did that. By a peripheral vision, uh, do you have a question? Okay. Very concise. Thank you. I've got to go to another meeting, but I just want to say I appreciate you all giving me this new charge. And this is something I've been working on for a couple of years before I even got to you all. So I, I just appreciate you taking the time to give us the extra consideration because I know it's not like you from this team before. And um, it's uh, taking the risk, but I can tell you from from what I've been trying to share with the board uh, that I haven't been able to share except to give you video yet and uh, be ready for the budget talks to me before I actually throw it out in full force. But the, um, the thing about uh, the piece is that um, we, um, I, like I say, I, I think that we don't have to open it up to the public school event. I think that we could do it by reservation. There are a lot of parks that do that. Uh, reservation to start so that we have a few people going in and we know who they are. So just filling that out for you to think about too. Fishing is supposed to be amazing out there. 
um, might be, be wonderful. We had your cemetery out there that was my cemetery at the beginning of the year. Yeah, and then on the next, is it all possible? Again, thank you so much, you guys, for giving it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ryan? I'd just like to ask the, the group if there are any. So we as a board uh, put it back to staff to look for potential funding partners before we took any further action. They've done that. I don't know how much more we're going to get. Um, so I'm, I'm curious uh, if anybody has any specific reservations to moving this, uh, moving this onto the priority pool before I make a motion. With, with the caveat. With, yeah, as a, bargain, as a bargain share. My only reservation is that there's only a certain amount of money for this last season's program. And I know the, the Cuscarilla thing that it, the OMYMC thing was bought with that money. And then there's a very large amount of money being spent now to do something with the old camp. And it's all good stuff that's being proposed to be done. It might in the end be a wonderful thing. But you know, you gotta make your choices. How are you gonna spend a little bit of money when you're trying to do something? And I guess each one of us has our own priorities and that's that's why I'm just reluctant to I, I just have to say this is directly connected to the other. This is it goes right to where it goes And uh, I think it's a company that would uh, it's unique. It's different, but it, I, I think if it was a, instead of being man made, if it was a big spring system or something like that, open water and so on, we'd be going. We wouldn't have many reservations. Yes, it was mine, but I, uh, I think it could be a very good asset for the uh, Flint County. Uh, I definitely would, in my opinion, would like to see uh, public use. Uh, it could be. Uh, say controlled public use, uh, but uh, uh, it has a lot of opportunity for that. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of kids, a lot of uh, uh, folks that you know, fishing, recreation, and so on. And that's part of our, that's part of our, our statement is is looking for recreation based natural resources. That's part of it. Uh, right. Water first. But. I agree. It's a great thing, but again, you you do this, you don't do something else. <laughs> Ahead, yeah, I'd just like to address that. I'm just only speaking from my own personal philosophy as a board member here. I don't, I've, I've never felt that the board should serve as a bottleneck for, um, for properties. If, if a property otherwise qualifies and meets our criteria, to hold it off in the hopes that something that we might like better uh, would get into the funding seems to be taking the control out of the county commission's hands where it is most appropriately placed. Um, yeah, I, I personally will never uh, refrain from advancing a property because I think that there's better stuff out there. If it's, if it's eligible and it's worthy of being protected, uh, there's a serious argument to be made that we should spend all the money and go back to the voters and ask for more money. And that's we're we're in our third program because that's exactly what we did the first two times. Um, that's all I have to say about it. Um, in your mission, are you going to propose a certain amount of share or just a blanket share? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any precedent for anything other than just a bargain share, which um, um, in in the past when we put properties on the bargain share, it's not like if somebody comes along and kicks in 10% of the funds, it's no one. Is there, is in the ordinance, there isn't a 50-50 or any other particular, no. No. it just means we have to have partner funds involved. Correct. Yeah, so I, to answer your question, I would not caveat it on any particular percentage requirement. Okay. So this is a question to ask Charlie, um, and it kind of is relevant to Paul. So if the potential fun financial liability is probably more in what comes after this purchase, more than the purchase price. So we've spent a lot of time about getting a bargain share on this thing, but this thing's not gonna break the bank, right? Right. Okay, so, but the, 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 the fear is the what comes after financially. 
remind me again what the the, the balance the limitations are on that because I remember that we actually voted we addressed this issue a while back about wh how much of uh, wild spaces money is available for management so it seems like there were some you know caps built in there so that if you get something that like is like a billion dollars to manage or something like that there's some programmatic limits right well the county commission when they you know when they set up the um, funding split for wild spaces yeah um, directed 10 percent to park improvements and 90 percent to conservation land right. and they have very recently basically reaffirmed that split at least through this current wild spaces funding cycle they have, um, so far approved a budget proposal. It won't be final until the you know final budget is adopted. But we put in a proposal to basically take a million dollars of wild spaces funding and direct it to the management of these newly acquired lands mm -hmm. for both, you know, just startup costs, uh, fencing, solid waste cleanup, security, that type of thing, and uh, recreational infrastructure on those lands. And so we think that will, you know, get us into regular management mode on these new wild spaces properties. Mm -hmm. So you have to be determined, you know, where we would end up if we acquired this. That could be at least the start of some funding. Um, as as you recall, it, it it just depends on on where the county would end up going with this. Whether whether you go with, you know, um, a high level of development, a high level of public use. Or as the commissioner suggested, you know, um, very low level of, of public use. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Yes. 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 Um, okay. Thank you. I don't see this project as something we should push ahead. I see it as an isolated parcel. I see the the cost after acquisition as being quite high when you talked about things like fencing and so forth. There are so many other parcels on the priority list that I would like to see the county to purchase and use their money that way that I, I do not see this as being something that we should get involved in. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Chris. Ross? Yeah. Um, Charlie, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the ordinance is that other than initial capital improvements to get the property into condition, it's supposed to be the acquisition. Isn't there, I think it's a 10% cap on acquisition funds can be used for management? I don't know if the, I, I don't think the 10% is hard coded in there. That has been in the past. Okay. You know, the uh, policy. Yeah. And, and we, Stuck within that when we made our budget. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think the programs come anywhere near 10% of the acquisition funds and management costs. But right. yeah, I knew I knew at some point there had been a cap. And I don't know if it was in the ordinance or in a bond covenants, perhaps it was something like that. Yeah, I I think that may be what you're thinking about. Yeah. This is what we've requested. I mean, that's the three cycle. Okay. So just to I, I'm equally concerned about. You know, this this could be a an absolute money pit. Yeah, but that would probably have come out of the general fund. Mm -hmm. The county wouldn't fund that out of Alaska County Forever funds, and I don't think they can can beyond. I guess they mm -hmm. could take an action, but as long as it didn't uh, frustrate the purposes of the program that the voters put into place, I think generally speaking, they'd have to do it out of the general fund. Okay. Yeah. So if I was confident it would come out of the general fund, I'd be all for it. <laughs> well, you referenced the Camp, the, Camp, the, um, Camp McConnell. Uh, yeah, did, where did that, where those monies come from? Those came from um, wild spaces, public places. Um, you know, it was kind of taken off the, the top before the split between um, conservation land and, and park improvement. The county committee, I mean, it's all a matter of, of policy, so the county commission can make that decision. But they have been um, very careful to try to um, basically stay in line with the way wild spaces were sold to the voters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, can we caveat this motion, or is that yeah, outside of our motion. scope? Or, well, I thought there was one brewing, but. There's one brewing. Okay. Brewing. <laughs> uh, I like it and right I, here. And it, but I made, a, I made a motion earlier. I don't want to, somebody else wanted to make the motion. I certainly don't want to hog the ball. No, yeah. Hog the ball. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, if there's no further discussion. I, one point I wanted to make, too. We're, when you look at this property, it's a huge parcel, but oh well, it's just so large or more. And so, if you look, if you remember the just value, which is not always even remotely accurate, but it's not always, you know, out of the universe. It's like three hundred dollars an acre. Yeah. And I, I know that that probably is not going to be what it would go for, but it's not. I think we may be surprised at what. The initial valuation is because when it's not it's not it's not zoned as or future lanes is not underneath residential. I think they're agri industrial lanes. Um, so there's there's some things that when they get appraised, it's not going to be appraised at whatever kind of they're three hundred sixty So uh, that was my only comment. Also, but the first is price. It's never been a real worry here. Like, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, my, my, my comment on that would be, we, I, I, that goes back to my thing about the demand, about how you manage it. You can manage it with an entrance, and it closes at whatever time, and then it's I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would add that benign neglect is probably a perfectly reasonable management plan <laughs> until funds come along to do something. So that gets, can we, this is an ignorant question, can we, Caveat, if there were a motion, can it include, you know, limits on management? Uh, I don't think we, so. we actually don't have a management plan that comes through that we then do. Uh, comments yeah. Comments. yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, I'll get another crack at the egg. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead. All right, go for it. I'd like to move that we place the High Springs Lime Rock Mines partner, excuse me, uh, property on the priority pool as a bargain share project. I second. We have a motion on the floor to put the Lime Rock Mines LLC property into the priority pool uh, with the condition of a something like as a bargain share. Um, do we have any further discussion on the motion? I was just looking at the council being found the article we had um,
the the first item in the agenda packet is the map that I have. Well, it's a different zoom, but essentially the map that I have up right now. The two um, property simulation documents that follow that for Parr and McNabb, respectively, are from the original nomination and evaluation of those properties. And so um, some of the wording and detail in those attachments show maps that reflect the original proposal for specifically for the car property, um, which included more parcels than what we're bringing to you currently today. Um, so in case there's any confusion about that with regards to what was in the agenda packet. Um, so providing an update on two properties that are within the bar hammock ACF project area, um, the Carr family property and the McNabb property. And um, the map that's up currently um, is just to show the location and context for this group of properties, which are located on the west side of Interstate 75, just southwest of the town of in between Bar Hammock Preserve and uh, Price and Scrub State Park in Marion County. That orange line cutting across the map that's on the screen is the Alachua County, Marion County boundary. Um, so, oh, let me. Yeah. In 2013, the Carr family property was presented. Um, it represented five parcels owned by five different either individual members of the family or collective of members um, in the Carr family. The total size at that time was 194 acres um, and it included one building and it was a combination of fee simple and conservation easement nomination. That project scored a 6.9 out of 10 from the on-site evaluation. And I want to point out that Peggy Carr is here representing the Carr family. Um, and so she'll be available to provide comments and answer questions if, if there is any. After a period of negotiation and discussion with the Carr family, the present um, component of the nomination that the family is ready to move forward with, with the Alachua County Forever Program, includes the two northernmost parcels. And um, in your evaluation packet on the map, those are the parcels that are outlined in red. Those two parcels together represent 72 acres under two different ownerships, two different family members. The current just value for those properties together is $195,786 or $2,718 an acre. And those two parcels are proposed as a fee simple acquisition under the current framework. I'll come back to that. Um, so essentially, in the center of this map, what you can see is that yellow shading. Those yellow shaded areas are what was the original 2013 um, nomination. And at that time, I actually have an error on this map where it says it was placed into the eligibility pool in 2014. That was actually 2013. And on the active acquisition list in 2013. So as, as a collection of parcels was replaced onto the active acquisition list in 2013. Part of the proposal, as you may have read in the evaluation, was that it would serve to connect prices scrub and at least close to Bar Hammock Preserve with a you know potential for maybe even bridging that connection directly to Bar Hammock Preserve with an other future acquisition. Um, the property that's shown in red is the other property that's under old business today, and that is part of the same project, but it's owned by an entirely different individual, Mr. McNabb. When the Carr family properties were placed onto the eligibility pool, the McNabb red piece 
which is 6.11 acres, were placed into the eligibility pool with it. Then when the car property went into the priority pool and onto the active acquisition list, the decision was made to hold off on the map moving forward because it represents more of an expansion of the car project rather than an independent acquisition on its own. It, it makes the most sense preservation wise to purchase McNabb only if CAR has moved forward and been acquired. So McNabb is currently in the eligibility pool and CAR is in the priority pool but has been reduced to those two that are outlined in red. Just a little bit on McNabb. It was scored as a 6.33 out of 10. Again, it's 6.11 acres, one parcel under one ownership. And um, the current just value and total value is $33,480 or 5,479 an acre. And that is nominated by the landowner as fee simple as well. a little bit more zoomed in view on um, the parcels that are part of this project. The orange property that's up to the right of the northern par parcel is also on the active acquisition list, and that is uh, BJ Wilder. So it's a different, another separate landowner, and it's approximately 28 acres. So because enough time has passed, I, I'm guessing maybe only one person has some familiarity with this, although I'm not sure. Can you, can you go back one now? I'll take you yeah. a little bit. Um, I've okay. seen lots of different configurations on the different maps. What we're looking at now, the non-highlighted red piece, the pieces are in yellow on the, the southeast large building square. Yeah. Um, those are still in consideration. Those are still on the active acquisition list. So, yeah, so everything that's not outlined in red, right, um, is still on the active acquisition list. Including the bottom little parcel, mm -hmm. like the rectangle. Right. Uh, this one? That, this is all yes, red. Yes. Okay. So the maps, the old maps that you have yeah. in that 2013 okay. um, okay. nomination, yeah. over time as these projects that's what I thought. do, that's the yeah. initial yeah. nomination. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I was looking at it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Right, so the family is not, uh, the car family is, is just not in a position at present to move forward on the other parcels that are not outlined in red, but they are looking still to move those parcels forward in the future. But at this moment, they need to move forward with the two that are outlined in red as a starting point. If that is clear. Um, so I, I just have some, a few images to um, just give a slight overview on the properties since probably no one was here in 2013. Maybe. Um, okay, <laughs> maybe there might be one of the things. Yeah. So this, this, um, this faint line that comes in here um, is indicated as a road, but the actual road that is sort of the driveway is this darker one that's closer to the edge, the east side of the car property. And that's the road that you drove in. That's what that first pic picture is. Um, so it's a dirt road, it's a private road. The woods on the right are the car property in, the, in those two blocks. Um, a mixture of older and more recent images of those two parcels in, in car. It's a mixture of slope forest, music flatwood, successional hardwood forest, um, and possibly it's a drier, another drier forest type, but uh, we made a fairly cursory visit. There's also basin swamp on the intersection between Carr and McNabb. There's a small stand of um, loblolly, uh, sort of like a very dense natural but plantation stand in the middle of the northern car parcel. Um, there is, as in all places around Micanopy and many areas around Gainesville, um, a fair amount of uh, coral ardesia on site. 
on both of the parcels. Um, so just again, view. So that is essentially kind of a loop up into this part of car. And then there is a basin swamp kind of on the west side of McNabb, southwest part of car. Um, and that's so these images are on both properties. Just a point of interest, a nice little population of one of the native orchids um, that was on both properties, not imperiled, but just nice to see. One imperiled plant was observed during our, our very brief visit, um, which is the endangered sort of spiny pod. And then McNabb similarly has a mixture of um, pretty high quality hardwood forest and slope forest, basin swamp, and a bit of an edge of these flatwoods. So the question for the board at this point is, is about because it's an, uh, there's a, a notable change in what had been put onto the property pool and how it had been presented and moved forward. Um, does the board have feedback regarding moving forward immediately with the two car parcels? It is already on the active acquisition list. And then the second question for McNabb will be, any change in the status of McNabb, which is currently in the eligibility pool. Do, do we, is this, is this a question for us or a question for the planning commission? So, um, in discussions with the family, um, you know, typically in negotiations, we come into situations where we might adjust the boundary a little bit. And I feel that it's within the, uh, you know, um, the power of staff to go ahead and work through some de minimis changes. But this was substantial enough that I just felt that it needed to come back through this board, basically be considered somewhat as, as the new nomination, if you will. Um, if you all didn't, didn't feel that it was, you know, standalone worthy of the priority pool, then we needed to know that. If you do, then we will go back to the, um, the county commission and ask for authority to proceed with the new configuration. No. Um, so the feeling is, is that the, the remainder of the property eventually at some point in the future will probably still move forward. We are very hopeful of that, yes. I don't know. No. I'm Peggy Carr, and my husband David is also on Zoom. And uh, I just wanted to be here to reiterate that there are absolutely no plans to do anything else with the rest of the property. And we hope eventually that it will be phase two of the <laughs> acquisition. Yeah, that's the point. And one other historical piece uh, of information is McNabb was originally owned by the Carr family. It was sold by my father-in-law to his colleague, Ryan McNabb, um, who has never done a thing with it except do um, a last Audubon bird count on that parcel. And he very much wants to see the land protected um, as we do with the rest of the property. And just one other clarification, I think Andy did a great job, but I do hope that if those parcels in McNabb can move forward, that we could also go ahead and get wilder at the same time because that road frontage um, is so critical. And if it doesn't get protected, I think the potential connection to Vaughn Hammock is going to be very difficult. So I would hope just to clarify that I think that uh, um, Wilder property, assuming the other three parcels can go, would become. Is that accurate, John? Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, you know, basically, as Andy said, <laughs> Wilder is already on the active acquisition list. Um, we as staff have been holding it, um, pending putting a deal together on the on the car property. Just, just like the previous discussions on McNabb, it wouldn't make sense to go forward with a wilder until we knew that we had the car property. But 
you know, assuming that we do have car properties, then yes, we would definitely um, get back with the wild. Yeah, it makes sense to go ahead, even though it's contingent upon, but it seems to serve them. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering on this map where Archie and Martin House was. It's not contingent next to it. I don't know if you all have read my father in law's book, but he wrote a lot about Wewa Pond. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the pond here. And when my parents, I mean, my in laws decided to um, give their children property, they divided the pond into five lots. And one of those lots was the original home site, so it's right here. And for the moment, it was excluded from even the proposal, the 2013 proposal, but ultimately, because maybe next year could get presented. Yeah, it needs to be preserved like the Marjorie Canan Romans <laughs> house yeah. 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 next to it. No, I actually think we should go ahead and, and uh, what are we doing? Renominating the car project, and also I think it should go into the priority pool. Is that what we're doing? That would be helpful to state what a potential motion might be, because mm -hmm. we're not exactly, I'm not exactly clear. <laughs> that was the, the best way to put um, to articulate it would be that um, this board Reaffirm. confirms and endorses um, the acquisition of, of this given the uh, current configuration or the you know the available configuration. Do you feel a motion is needed, or do we need to? I mean, uh, would it be useful to how it kind of goes out of bounds, or could we just put on a, a like do a reaffirmation vote? You could, I mean, you could, right? You could certainly, we could certainly um, be a first, but right, have it as a a separate. Um, well, this is separate property on the separate project on the on the priority pool. Well, this is set precedent because this is the first time this has ever really happened. Yeah. In the form of a motion, does it, that's what we're looking for? To, 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 yes, I'm I, I frankly looking okay. for an action by this board okay. that will um, support taking this back to the county commission and getting them to reaffirm that we can proceed on this project as. So we can do it even though it's much more side width of the properties. So basically, it's uh, we affirm. Not a motion. <laughs> <laughs> we confirm the, the, the car project, including McNabb, to the full fee priority pool project. And I think McNabb, because it was nominated separately, because you know it's only in the uh, the opportunity pool at this point, that would need to be moved forward into the uh, priority, priority pool. pool. McNabb's only the rest the of it technically is in the priority but not under this configuration. Did you write down what you just said? You want two? Okay. So you want two I, I think we need two, okay. two motions, two actions. And start with the dad. Did my wife tell you to say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think when you, when you walk yourself through a motion, you need to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I think you make the motion now. <laughs> um, are you serious? Uh, to have right, I, I'd like to make a motion. I would like to convey our board's intention that the two parcels in play 
move forward separate from the entire project for accurate. If there's value enough okay. with those two parcels separate from the entire project that we can continue forward without having on the entire project in the first place. Second. Does that, that stumble through that? Is that adequate enough? Charlie said it's going up and down. We're, we're going to wordsmith this afterwards. It sounds like. <laughs> okay. We have a motion on the floor for the second uh, to uh, move these properties forward under this um, new configuration, uh, uh, which has already been uh, previously approved uh, uh, for acquisition. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what he said. I can read it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think I got it verbatim. Motion to convey the land conservation board's intention that the two parcels in play move forward separate from the entire project for acquisition. In play might be yeah. 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 I can just write the input. I can 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 write the I the the I Opposed, like side. Uh, hearing, none. Motion carried. Car abstained. Uh, now we have to do next. Yeah, Mr. Chair. That to possibly be priority. If we get a motion. I move that we move. I move. We move. I move that we um, place the prop map property in the um, priority pool. Well, I'm gonna go to the, yeah. So bad. Then why aren't you doing it anymore, sir? He, I, I did it for how many years? It's like I don't know. six years. <laughs> Would you be willing? Sure. Yay. Yay. <laughs> One of these days I'll learn to say no. <laughs> 
Yeah. But no, today's yeah. not that day or for you guys. So, did you need a second or a vote on that? He accepted. Is that, is that his, yeah. I don't think we need a motion for it. Right. Yeah. Right. Approved by our motion. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And they are recorded, that's for sure. <laughs> Were you voluntold? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian's playing the role of my wife. <laughs> Ooh. That's about the, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Byron, are you there? Yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, I'll be fast. I'm going to give you the big uh, four updates that are um, newsworthy. And I'd just like to welcome TV20. I noticed they're uh, attending our meeting tonight. Um, the, you all remember the um, uh, Lundgren property um, on the Santa Fe River. Uh, Helen and uh, Dr. Lundgren, Dale Lundgren, um, uh, completed the, their incredible generous donation of about uh, 248 acres of their land to the county on um, just uh, in, uh, I believe we, we finished the closing on it in June. We didn't have a meeting in July, so that's why I'm bringing this update to you all to remind you that that is now final and um, it's a wonderful property and there's been some great publicity on it and um it is it is now a, a county preserve um and so um the lundgrens um do love to see people using it so um plan on visiting it when we're ready okay Yay. next was a 15 or 16 yeah it deserves a PA. yeah and a big thank a big thank you to the lundgren family um, the Fox Pen Connector property that we, um, we had talked about that at, at the beginning with uh, Emily, that 40 acre um, isolated piece um, <clears throat> and the, the uh, Jackson Ayers nomination. Well, this is the Fox Pen Connector in red um, and owned by Weyerhaeuser. We are under contract with Weyerhaeuser um, and we are expected to close on this property and it will become uh, hopefully under county ownership by, by the end of October. Um, and as you can see, it make, we call it the Fox Pen Connector because it connects Fox Pen at the north and the Lockloosa Slough County Preserve to the south. That's how it gets its name, Fox Pen Connector. Um, and so, that's the update on that one. And um, the, one of the larger conservation easement projects that we are working on is the uh, Hitchcock uh, conservation easement as we call, refer to it. It's on the Santa Fe River. You can see it actually connects conservation land already existing along the Santa Fe River all the way down to the county's Mill Creek Preserve. The area in the red is um, property that's owned by the Hitchcock Family Corporations and the conservation easement um, that we are working on would cover that area in the red. And um, that conservation easement will restrict development and perpetuity into the future. And it also requires the uh, the Hitchcocks to follow best management practices in terms of uh, continuing um, some agricultural activity and silviculture activity. Um, and that we are expecting to uh, be on the county commission agenda for approval on September 28th. That's where that one is headed. Next. Um, the last um, item that's pretty newsworthy is we're very close to getting under contract on the Santa Fe River Brown conservation easement, which is the red area. Notice it is right next door to the Lundgren family property. And um, 
So uh, we are hoping to be able to get under contract with uh, David Brown, the owner, uh, before the end of the year is out. And we'll probably, if we are able to do that, we'd probably end up closing on that conservation easement early in 2022. And that is approximately 370 acres that will be preserved right on the Santa Fe River. Limited silviculture uh, will be allowed, but um, the property owner plans, it, once they complete a, a harvest or two, they will not harvest anymore. And um, so we'll have a, with the Lundgren uh, conservation area and the Brown conservation easement right next door, that will be approximately a, almost a 600 acre preserved area right there on the Santa Fe River. And that's my, those are my updates. Thank you, sir. Very good. Thank you. Can you, can you tell where the city of Brooker is on the other side of the river? On that map? No. <laughs> it's further up the stream, quite a bit. It's right about there where it's running over, um, running over ranch. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm sure it's 